Hi there, this is Ray Sharp and um, I'm going to run through a few examples that demonstrate jQuery's kind of out-of-the-box functionality. These accompany the presentation I've been giving over the last few days. Um, so if you haven't seen these, you can see them on my personal blog, uh, which is down in the corner here. And just look for the, uh, the DOM scripting toolkit jQuery. So I'm going to start off by um, demonstrating chaining. And to do that, I've just created this little tabs demo. So the markup is here, so when I click on the links, it goes down to each of these tabs. And I've styled it so it, it can look like tabs. I've included jQuery, or the latest version of jQuery. And this is the equivalent of the document.ready function. So I like the shortcut, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to use it. The first thing I'm going to do is cache the um, the tab panels. So div.tabs gives me narrows down my context by by this um, DOM node and then I'm going to look for the, the divs that are direct descendants of this uh, this tabs element, so div. And if I do a quick console.log to make sure I've actually got all three of them, there you go. I'm also going to capture the links that I'm interested in. The the ones that need to be clicked. So div dot tabs ul a. And these give me the links down here. And the key thing about this effect of the the tab effects is that the the href of the um, of the link resembles a, a CSS ID selector. So I'm going to use the link dot hash, which is this area here that I hi that I've highlighted to filter um, this collection here and show the right one. So links.click To cancel the default browser action I'm going to do return false so that it doesn't jump around. So my collection of tabs I'm going to do dot hide, so this hides every one of them every one of the tabs in the collection. I'm going to do dot filter, this dot hash, and this now changes my collection from all the tabs to the one who has an ID that matches this dot hash. And I'm going to do dot show. I've used indentation here to help me know uh, uh, when a filter has changed the collection. So this level, to me, tells me that um, I'm working with the top top collection, and if I filtered it, I indent. Um, you can have it all on one line, or you don't have to have it chained, but um, chaining is one of the nice features of jQuery. So, if I click on second, third, that's the effect. So I've hidden all of them, and I'm just showing the one I've, um, whose ID matches the hash of the link. I take the chain just a touch further by chaining the links. I can filter for the first one using another uh, um, a selector, and I can trigger a click event. So when I go to the page for the first time, it selects the first tab and hides the other ones. So the next example I want to show you are namespaced events. So these are, um, it demonstrates, sorry, namespace, demonstrates um, just simple effect, uh, events, but also shows you how you can create a subset of events on uh, the elements that already have your default event, and how you can strip away strip that away later on. So I'm going to say. Whenever I click on any one of these links, I'm going to just push a little bit of debug information into this this debug ID. And um, when I click on remove, I'm going to remove the namespaced event. So a dot bind, click. There is a sh you can use the shortcut dot click, but um, I'm using dot bind for this example. 
and I want to do debug dot append link collect a dot bind click dot foo and this part is my namespace So when I click on the links, I should just get two messages in my debug area, any one of those links. So there they are, the two, two examples, the, the two uh, debug messages. When I click on remove, I'm just going to say um, if this dot is remove. So I've got this class here that I can uh, assert that they clicked on the remove link. And I'm going to do debug dot append um, removed namespace, and I'm going to select the, the the links again. So use the same selector I used here. I could cache this as well. Um, in fact, I will cache it. Links. So I'm always working with the same same selector. Unbind, and I can either do dot foo to say unbind all the dot uh, all the foo namespace events, or I can do click dot foo. So to start off with both events are on. Click on remove, remove namespace event. Then click on these links. and my default event is still there and still working. The next example I want to show you is a really simple bit of Ajax. So my page here is literally just a, a couple of links and a, an empty UL with an idea of info. These links go to the info HTML page and if there were lots of content on info When I went to the uh, the particular hash links or projects, it would scroll down. Um, and what I want to do is, when I click on one of these links, I want to inject the particular uh, set of links into my load example. So if you look at the simple info page, we've got two ULs with an ID of projects and links. And I'm going to grab all of these LIs and shove them into my page. So when the document's ready, hook uh, a click event onto these links, and because the href uh, refers to the actual URL I want to load in, I can use this.href, so info.load, this.href. If I leave that just as it is for the moment, return false so it doesn't actually click through to the page, it should load in the entire page, Yeah, which we don't want, we just want um, the ID that I'm interested in. In fact, the LI is from the ID that I'm interested in. So, if I add a space and then this dot hash, which resembles an ID selector, space LI, it's now pulled in just the bits I'm interested in. And if you look at the Ajax hit, You'll see it's pulling in the entire uh, web page, and then behind the scenes, because I've added this space and then passed it a, C a CSS selector, it runs jQuery against this page and searches for the elements I'm after. So your selector at this point can be as complicated as any other selector you would normally use. And now finally, I'm going to show you simple effects that jQuery has out of the box. So I've set up a simple page which has uh, this, this run link and a 
the div with an ID of block, and the uh, the block is styled so it's position absolute, height and width, top and so on. So when the uh, the page is ready, in fact I can show you these just using Firebug. So show and hide. Oh, show obviously won't do anything because it's already shown. Hide, show. So those are instantaneous. If you pass in a uh, um, a time, so 400 milliseconds, it will take 400 milliseconds to hide the uh, the block, and it will do it like that, or vice versa. I can use toggle. Or I can use toggle without a timer. I've got fade out. Fade in. I can't remember if we got fade toggle. No, we don't have fade toggle. Um, slide up. down and toggle and then we can roll our own animations which I'll show you here so when we click on the run link we're going to use dot animate and we pass it in an object so this object are is CSS properties to animate. Um, there's two ways of calling this function. One of them is with an object that holds everything, and one of them is with an object of CSS properties. You pass in the duration, and you pass in the ease in. Um, swing and I think linear are the defaults that jQuery has, but because I've gone and got ease in .js, uh, e the, the ease in plugin, if you just Google for jQuery ease in, uh, you'll be able to download the plugin. I can pass in um, a different algorithm for the uh, the ease in. So what I want to do is make it drop down to the page and bounce a little, and then shoot off to the edge of the and uh, shoot off the edge of the page. So I'm going to change the opacity to 0.5. I'm going to change the height because I want to, and I'm going to do it, uh, a relative change, so it's 20 pixels. So subtract its current height and take it down to 80 pixels. Do the same thing on the width. And I need to move the top to the bottom of the page down here. So I'm going to do this by using height, And I need to subtract a bit to kind of handle the fact it's shrunk and it's if I did it to the very top, the, the inner height, it would actually go off the page. So um, I've already worked out what height I need to get rid of. On a pending uh, PX, so it, it treats it as pixels. Let's give it that test. Oops, that's too narrow. Oh, I forgot my. I made that minus 20 pixels, so that should be minus equals. Cool. So there's a little bounce right at the end. I'm going to make that slightly slower so you can actually see it. And um, I'm then going to chain on another animation. And I'm being a bit cheeky here because I'm actually animating the the opacity for another half second. But because the opacity is already at 0.5, it's not going to it's not going to do anything. It's just going to sit there. And this does block the uh, the browser CPU because it's just going to loop, but it does for the effect that I'm I'm going to show you guys. And uh, once that animation or that pausing is finished, I'm going to make it fly off the screen. So 150% should be enough. And I'm going to do that as half a second as well. And just to be completely sure, once it's all finished, passing in this callback to say uh, this.hide so that you can't see it at all. Got an error. Where 
There's the error. Ah, I can't spell function. There you go. There you go. So there's my effect. Drops off and shoots out the page. So those are some of the examples that, or some of the features that are available in jQuery out of the box. There's loads of others. There's plugins to make them a lot easier uh, and to have a lot of these things written for you. Um, check in plugins.jQuery.com. Um, otherwise, appreciate any feedback that you've got. Thanks for watching.